Dedication, sacrifice, believing in yourself. These are things we hear all the time, but few of us put those words into action. This is Jabari Presents, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. I've been put in this box for so much of my like career in the last couple of years as like a conscious rapper. Or like, you know, people are like, oh, it's like spoken word or like whatever. It's like, I, to me, I make rap music. I never wanted to be an underground rapper. Like I never set out to just rap for the underground. Like I hate that term. That was never my intention. My intention was to make music that spoke to people and not like 40 people. like hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people could connect with what I'm writing about. The song is about you thrifting? Yeah, okay. it's just basic. It's a bunch of different thrift shops and us kind of going from thrift shop to thrift shop and just kind of reenacting like the narration that's set in in the raps. Okay. Like the raps are kind of like self-explanatory. It's really like a visual kind of story. So it's basically just based on the raps. Okay. Of the song. Okay. I'll play you. this off you know, a yeah. little bit. Um, but I, it's gonna be funny, but it's not gonna be like hella clowning, like some and we dance. It's gonna yeah, be like yeah, okay. it's, but it's gonna be have some humor to it, but it's also you know kind of a stunty thrift shop yeah. type of song. So it should be dope. Hey, everybody, dig in. I got eight pounds of chicken. <laughs> Pushing the DeLorean, swagging out. The video is going to be very, very interesting. And when did you start working together? Six years ago. I mean, when I first met him, it was over a beat. And um, really, really different time. It was kind of like maybe less than a year after the language of my world had come out. So he, his career was, you know, he had buzz. So for me being like a young kid, it was very exciting to, to even like link with him. And when I linked with him, um, ended up showing him a bunch of photography. And throughout like the two years after that, um, I ended up doing like three songs with him randomly throughout time. Um, but the bulk of our relationship was photo shoots. I became kind of his photographer. And then, um, and then in 2008, uh, he went to rehab. I've always struggled with, with being balanced. It was one side or the other. It's like, I could never just keep it even keel and straight. Um, Why? The simple answer is that, that I'm an addict. Like I, that it was like that with drugs, it was like that with women, it was like that with, with material objects. It was, it's always been this all or nothing type of thing. Like either I'm like, no, I, I can't feed into that at all, or I'm completely consumed and obsessive. I think that I'm becoming, and I'm not there yet. None of this stuff, I'm like there yet. Like I don't have it figured out. But I've felt so many times like what it's like to feel failure, what it's like to let people that love you down, what it's like to be stagnant in the art that you love to do. I've had so much of my life, like particularly my 20s, like spent in that place of trying to fight my way out of that. And, you know, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to be somebody that is respected, and not just for my music. I want to be respected in terms of the way that I treat people, the way, the subjects in which I choose to like address in my music. And not because like I'm trying to make records about them, it's just because that's what's important to me. That's my music is just my, my creative outlet in terms of expressing what is important to me, what has importance, what has value. And I want to be respected for that. I spent all day yesterday like getting this, you know, getting racks for clothes, like 
shit that most artists Excuse don't me. do. You know? Sorry to bother you, man. Yeah. You're Mac Moore, right? I am. I'm Kyle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My girlfriend is an absolute fan of yours. Nice. Would you mind? Would you mind if we got a picture? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> We like, saw the crew cut and the fur coat and we're like, <laughs> that's Macklemore. All like the acknowledgement and like going out in public and getting recognized, like that happens like slowly. So like you're constantly like evolving into somebody that like can't go out at certain times or can't go to the mall or if, if you do go, like you know what's gonna happen. Um, that doesn't happen overnight or at least it didn't happen with me. So I gotta ask you about this. Yeah. My white pony. <laughs> Albino Tony. <laughs> um, no, man, but obviously, you know, you did this song, My Oh My, which was like celebrating Dave Neal House. Yeah. Uh, and what he did for the city, but that's dope. So tell me a little yeah, bit about they, how you uh, that. You, you performed at the home opener, right? Yeah, last year. Um, you know, which was the first game since he died. And uh, it was a crazy, it was, we'd been on tour. And they hit us up when we were on tour and they were like, we want you to do this. Mm. And it's like the Mariners organization, so baseball fans, it's one thing to like perform at an NBA game, but to like come out for like a Major League Baseball game, like Major League Baseball and hip hop are not like intrinsically linked yeah, by any yeah, means. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a bunch of people that are Mariners fans probably don't consider hip hop like real music still, you know? Mm -hmm. We had a marching band, the Garfield, the high school I went to. Mm. We had their marching band. We had like a string section and a horn section, four piece string and horn section each. And um, came out to 50,000 people, like lights. I mean, it was just straight up out of a movie. Like wow. the memory that I have is like, you know, walking down like onto the field, the entrance onto the field and you know, they announce your name over the speaker and it echoes and shit. And <laughs> the grass is hella vibrantly green. But yeah, they gave me a jersey. It's like one of the only, um, the patch, the only people that have that are the people that played in that game. And me and Ryan. Wow. Yeah, so super wow. dope honor. And I, I put it in this box and did a janky ass job. It's like falling <laughs> over and shit. But yeah, it's tight. Wow. Yeah. All right. Day two in Seattle. We're about to go to Value Village, which is a thrift store. Another place that Macklemore and Ryan are shooting that video. It's another early morning, another day. I'm on set. And uh, yeah, this is the work, man. This is the grind that you have to put in to really make it. So let's go catch up with Macklemore and Ryan, see what's going on. So this is going to be a performance shop for Macklemore um, with some ladies shopping in the women's clothes section and this is when Macklemore is talking about how he comes up on things even in the women's section. Can I do like a soul train thing where you go forward and backwards? Yeah, just go through them. And girls just watch him when he goes through. There you go. Uh, it's been fun. It's uh, a bit hectic, but it's good shoot so far. This video is about like fun times and thrifting. I mean, it's more about, you know, the whole chase of finding something cool that nobody else has at a thrift shop, so we're trying to capture that. There's so much content with, within the two different verses that um, it's going to be all over the place. Particularly with just a shit ton of outfits. <laughs> like that one. Like that one. <laughs> Alright, action! There's times where you're like, I wish I was anywhere else but right here, like in the studio or on on set of a music video. Like today I was feeling that, like burnt out, no no sleep, haven't eaten, exhausted. And you're like, I just want to be in bed. Like I would pay any amount of money to just be in bed right now and just be somewhere else. But I forget that what makes a good product is the energy that you put into it. And that is a sacrifice. Like if you're gonna do that job and you're gonna do it right, you're gonna do it to the best of your ability, you have to sacrifice pretty much everything else because that's how good music is made. Like when you're constantly in that place of creativity and willing to go above and beyond to make that product what you know it can be and, and, and give it the life and the legs that you know it deserves to hit that utmost potential, you have to sacrifice everything else. And Ryan and I have sacrificed everything in the last like two and a half, three years. Maintaining your brand at a certain level independently is, you know, for us, a 70 to 80 hour a week job. Monday through Sunday, every week. 
Um, and I think that you have to really, really, really want that because you're sacrificing kind of a normal life. Um, and you're here all the time. We slowly like adjusted to like meet the very essential needs of what was happening. Uh, wow. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> so this, you guys. We do everything. Yo, it's like we you do got, everything. You guys are running like a store, man. Yeah. A real store. Yeah. Wow. So Trisha Davis, who really became like, you know, part of our all, our whole shit officially like about, I don't know, a year and a half ago or something, yeah. operates this whole machine. One thing that Macklemore was talking about was it's a tricky situation when you have your art be your business. Of course. You have to make money from your art. Of and course. I think the, the, the thing that you guys have an advantage of is you don't, you're not compromising anything because you're running it all. Right. You know, if, right. if somebody so like, else was running this, yeah. man, like, So, I mean, knows? the various things that you're selling, you still put your creativity into, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. And yeah, we I think that that it's the little stuff like this that like you know, outside of big kind of major deals just not making sense even on paper. It's like stuff like this is what gives you longevity. Thank you. Have a couple parts of Do you ever think that like, if I was on a label, I would not have to do all of this? <laughs> <laughs> that ever, that ever Absolutely. Yeah. But you know so what, man, it's like driving a U-Haul and okay. awesome. doing right. my own wardrobe and shit. Like, yeah, we could over. outsource all this. Yeah. We could spend like, cool. See you, guys you know, morning, 30 grand on the video yeah, or 50 you. grand on the video yeah. and, and hire drivers. And oh, I would just rather do it. To me, what's exciting is getting the leverage up so high that they want to fuck with you on whatever level they possibly can. And then you have them. And not in some like, haha, I got them now way, but in a way that's just like, I want to be in a position of power. It almost feels like you're more attached now, like, cause it's not just a video. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, nah, this is this is what I do. Yeah. Literally. It's on me. Yeah. And that's the big difference. It's like, you just get used to doing it yourself, and when you outsource it, and it doesn't turn out the way that you had it in your head. Mm -hmm. It's like that's on you too. Like yeah. th making that decision to outsource and give it to somebody else and give the creative control to somebody else, it eventually falls back on you. You guys need help? Yeah. Like, I would love to not have to be like packing up my own U-Haul and renting the own U-Haul and, and all the stuff that you know, it took to get to this point today, but it's so worth it in the end to me yeah. as long as I have control. You look at artists that are in the studio all the time that don't do any of that other stuff they're recording like more than I'm able to record yeah. because I'm doing stuff like this. Yeah. But we come from that school of like, you do it yourself or it doesn't yeah. get done. Yeah. And we don't have a budget. We also come from that school, like we have no yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to even actually have a U-Haul and not be like looking for somebody's like oh, truck yeah, yeah. tomorrow. That's a, that's a step above. You know what I'm right? saying? Like yeah, this yeah, is the exactly. like, you know, <laughs> this is the step above for us. I don't want to be coming to them like, please like put me on, like please give me a signing bonus. Like I want to be in a place where they know that we're worth something, that we are a tangible brand that they want to align with, and then that gives us power. That gives us the leverage, and that's what's exciting to me. I want to be on a major label, man. <laughs> I'm just fucking it. It was dope. Come, help us. We were just kidding. We loved you, man. It was grassroots. It wasn't big money behind it, it wasn't a label, it wasn't a cosign, it was just hard work and people connecting with the music. And that's the dopest thing, is that you can't take that from me. Like you can talk shit about my music, you can say whatever you want, you can not like it, but you can't take away the fact that there are X amount of people that believe in what I do passionately. And that's better than any cosign better than any signing bonus that's better than any label and that's why I got there and that's why I'm so proud of that.